Hello and welcome to another edition of the Dinosaur News Center. We bring you the latest in research, discoveries, and other news relating to the world of dinosaurs. I'm your host, the Illiterate Scholar. In this edition of the Dinosaur News Center, we'll be looking at some of the earliest dinosaurs ever discovered, a new ceratopsin from Korea, and another tyrannosaur. We have a lot to cover, so let's get the show on the road. The second oldest theropod has just been discovered. This is Eodromius Murphy of late Triassic Argentina. That was around 230 million years ago. Like its predecessor Herrerasaurus, Eodromius has all the features that future predators would inherit. It would take another 30 million years before dinosaurs would dominate the planet, but during its day, Eodromius lived in the shadows of large reptiles and proto-mammals. And proto-mammal is just another way of saying large reptiles. So far, all of the earliest dinosaur discoveries have been found in the Valley of the Moon in Argentina, but scientists are not ready to say whether this place is truly the birthplace of dinosaurs. The evolution of the sauropod is hazy at best, but with this new discovery, things are about to be a little bit clearer. This sauropod is tentatively named the Yizosaurus sunny. It's about 30 feet long, and lived in early Jurassic China 200 million years ago. This relatively complete skeleton also comes with a completely intact skull. This is a rarity in sauropod fossils, since their skulls are very fragile and usually doesn't get fossilized. Having a complete skull will better help establish its relationship with other sauropods. You know, we haven't gone a single episode without a ceratopsin being discovered, and why should this episode be any different? A pentaceratops skull that gained the title of the world's largest dinosaur skull may not have been a pentaceratops at all. It's currently dubbed Titanoceratops and it has 22 features that differentiates it from the smaller pentaceratops. Oh yeah, there's also the possibility of it being a different growth stage of pentaceratops. But whatever it is, it does show that a large body size of the subgroup known as Triceratopsini evolved 5 million years earlier than we thought. Yeah, we know Tyrannosaur and their wussy two-fingered hands. Now get ready for a theropod with only one finger. This is Linhi Nikus monodactylus from Cretaceous Inner Mongolia. And this tiny discovery had only one finger. This creature is small enough to stand on the palm of your hands and resembles other Alvarosaurs such as Mononikus. In Mononikus's case, it has the same giant claw with small indentions on the side of the hand suggesting that it had two additional tiny fingers. Even more surprising is that Linhi Nikus is closer to the base of the family tree, meaning it evolved more fingers down the line. So far, the only theory is that these animals hunted termites, and they use these powerful claws to dig up the termite mounds so they can eat them. Dinosaur discoveries are pretty rare in Korea, but now they can add another... Ceratops into the list, of course. This, ladies and gentlemen, is Korea Ceratops. Really? Korea Ceratops? That's the best you could come up with? The last dinosaur you discovered was named Koreasaurus. What next? Korea Raptor? Korea Sucus? Korea Mimus? Come on, have a little originality in your names. Anyway, Korea Ceratops Wa. Wa? Was? Wa? You know what? On second thought, please keep it at Korea whatever. At least I can pronounce those names. So, where was I? Korea Ceratops has a strange bone structure in its tail, making it resemble a boat paddle. This leads some paleontologists to speculate that it was semi-aquatic, but beyond the shape of the tail, the evidence is inconclusive. Remember that bumper crop of discoveries in Utah from two episodes ago? This discovery missed that list by about a month. This tyrannosaur is called Teratophanus curry from late Cretaceous Utah. Its shorter snout places it closer to Tyrannosaurus and Daspletosaurus. And that's really all I can say about this creature. But wait, there's still another Tyrannosaur discovery, but it hasn't been officially published yet. When it's officially announced, you can bet I'll be back with another update. Hmm, let's see what kind of dinosaur is up for this episode. Ah, here's another good one. Meet Europasaurus hogari of late Jurassic Northern Germany. Europasaurus is in the same infra order as Brachiosaurus and Camarasaurus. You'd think this dinosaur would be pretty huge, but actually, it's a dwarf. Paleontologists studied the histology of the bones to determine that it was a dwarf and not a juvenile. It's only about as tall as a horse and around 6 meters long. 
The reason it's so small is because it lived on an island. There is only so much food on a small island, and if you're a huge herbivore, you're going to starve to death. It's speculated that the ancestors of Europosaurus had to dwarf rapidly after migrating to these islands. The skull itself shares many similar features to Brachiosaurus and Camarasaurus. It almost makes it look like some kind of hybrid of the two. Europosaurus is the only other dwarf sauropod besides Magyarosaurus of Romania. Now with all of that out of the way, let's take a look at the mail and see what kind of questions we have for today. Ice Wings asks, How different was the Earth during when dinosaurs were alive? Oh yeah, the planet was very different back then. Here's a quick abridged look at the different eras during that time. During the Triassic, all of the Earth's continents were connected into a giant landmass called the Pangaea. The temperature was hot and dry and there were no broadleaf trees. Oh, and grass hasn't evolved either. During the Jurassic, the continents started to break up and the Atlantic Ocean just started to form. The hot and humid weather allowed the planet to be covered in lush jungle. During the Cretaceous, the continents start to split even further. The North American continent was actually split into three different islands. There are now higher mountains and flowering plants started to evolve. The ancestor of modern bees also evolved during this time. Shadowwing Tronix asks, What is your favorite dinosaur? My favorite dinosaurs are Tarbosaurus and Therizinosaurus. <laughs> Whoa, whoa, hey guys, there's no need to fight over little old me. Lexi Jen asks, how accurate is Jurassic Park? Hmm, just how accurate is Jurassic Park? Well, there's a lot of scientific research that went into the movie, but some of it turned out to be false, while there are fantasy elements that later actually turned out to be true. So for this question, I think I'm going to use a really scientific method to determine it. I'll toss a coin. Heads, it's accurate. Tails, it's not. Heads, it's accurate. And that about wraps it up for this edition of the Dinosaur News Center. Until next time, this is the Illiterate Scholar signing off.